Hey, hello. A very happy morning. Uh, I mean, to be in a fintech event, it always excites me, and I always feel happy. You know, somebody coming from a fintech background, it always is easy to you know communicate and uh, share the passion and the intent we have towards fintech. You know, so and again, right? So why do I get excited? Is something I keep ask myself, right? And how is fintech different from the uh, regular financial institutes? So. Each time I've asked myself, the only thing I've uh, got the answer is innovation. And it also asked me the next question, don't uh, financial institutes innovate? They do, they do a lot, right? So, but then how is FinTech different? So I always, I mean, again, the answer echoes in my mind is, uh, the relevance of FinTech is again, how they see innovation as their core strategy, how innovation is a journey for them, a continuous thing rather than uh, next, tangible goal, right? So that's where I always felt the difference between a FinTech and how FinTech is relevant in today's market. So I, I, was, I was having a conversation with one of my colleagues recently. So he was talking about, you know, how he was on a, a road trip and it was a typical, uh, you know, a long weekend road trip. He was going with his family and there was a lot of traffic. So he was going, uh, you know, on his way, he saw a signboard saying, you know, one kilometer for the uh, toll plaza. So he thought uh, to get into conversation with his daughter. So he was talking about how NETC as a technology has helped reduce the time of travel, how NETC is also from this organization, NPCI. And he was having this conversation and saying how they did away with this long queues. And by the time, you know, he reached this uh, toll gate. So there were a couple of cars ahead of him uh, waiting for the semaphore to clear them. So once it happened, he, I mean, he, was, he slowed down his car and once it happened, he crossed the toll plaza. Once it happened, his, his daughter asked him, I did see a queue there, so how, is it, how has it changed, right? So this made me think, the, we, it was a casual conversation over a tea, but it made us think, no, is this young generation, the new millennials, see in a different prism, a different lens, how you know, innovation is for them? So, how, so th it also made us think, these new people, right? So they adapt to technology so fast, and they are looking out for what next? how it makes their lives so comfortable, right? So they, so it also made us think, so innovation is something that has to be fast and it has to be continuous thing. So I went back to understand how innovation has spanned in, yeah, how innovation has spanned in the history. So I stumbled upon this, right? So innovation in the history has shown that innovation has happened in six cycles, six waves. The first wave started uh, around 1785 and it lasted for around 60 years. So I, I'm just going to catch up on one link here, which is transportation, just, just to be quick on this. Okay, so it started with the first wave was the, the emergence of uh, water power, textiles and iron, but this is a phase where still uh, we were using the animal power for transportation. So the next wave came in, it lasted for 55 years, it started with the emergence of steam power and more importantly rail. So this again changed, or the initial, the, the start of how transportation changed for us. So the rail made global trade possible, it expanded the commerce, this, that's the kind of impact it had. And then the next wave, it, it lasted for 50 years. It, this, this is where there was widespread uh, acceptance of our usage of, you know, the internal combustion engine, which again made, change the way we transported, right? So th this made uh, road, road travel or road transportation better. And, and again, right, the last mile connectivity, all, all enhanced. And the next fourth wave came with the emergence of aviation. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm talking on the link of transportation. So this, this the aviation probably opened up a completely different market, right, and how transportation happened and how people traveled. So this changed for good, right? So again, the next wave lasted for 30 years. It, start, it started with the emergence of software in particular and digital networks. So how did it apply for transportation? So it, it changed the way how you know, the uh, power of cars got transformed using the software and how the safety got enhanced using the software and how the, 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 uh, you know, the vehicles were connected and how people were able to book or pre-plan their travel so easily and the transportation more efficient. So now the next wave started in 2020, this is the latest wave and it's still in progress. This with the rise of 
AI, robots, robotics, drones, and the clean tech, right? So what it is doing for us in, in terms of transportation is it is leading to a place where we are going to have driverless transportations, even deliveries having in drones without human intervention. What it means is, you know, it also reduces or in fact removes the limitation of uh, dependence on the human workforce. So what, what, what did I infer and what uh, I could take away from this was in each of the waves, we see the duration is reducing and it's been a constant pattern. It starts with 60 years and now we are looking at, you know, innovations uh, wave in the cycle to be only for 25 years. So what it taught me was, you know, the duration decreases, which also meant the adaptation by people, where the people were able to adopt to as also, you know, as rapidly increased, which meant the cycles are reducing. And, and I try to see if this, um, you know, applied for other things as well. So one thing uh, it struck me was how the, uh, the journey of phones were, right? So when the wired phone came in, it took 50 years for 50% uh, of the US population to adopt to. Whereas when the wireless came in, it just took 16 years for a similar adoption. And believe me, when the, mobile, when the smartphones came, which were even expensive, right? More expensive than the previous ones, it just took six years for the adoption. So that's the kind of adoption cycles are, you know, uh, are going through. And it also applied to FinTech as well, or, or rather financial institutes as well, you know, uh, forget about the barter system or the cash system. So when the credit cards came into picture in 1950s, and then the innovation of uh, say, the magnetic strip also changed the way, you know, how the credit cards were accepted. So credit cards now, it, it also produced the ATM machines, the POS machines in 1979, and then came the uh, online payments in 1994, then, it, and, and then the innovation cycles reduced tremendously with the FinTech, right? The mobile payments, the, the contactless, the wearables, and whatnot. And now we are talking about uh, uh, invisible payments. So, so this has been consistent with uh, whichever example we could take. So I've, I've just asked me a question, how, how and why do you think this are reducing, right? So each time I checked it, I could understand only one thing. Technology has been driving this change, right? The technology has been the way to go, and technology has created new markets, and that has changed the way people see and people uh, live, right? And also has made people, each cycle has made, the technology has made the people more comfortable to use technology, and the adoption cycles have only been better. And, and also what I understood with the adoption is, no more people see, uh, no, have this perception of uh, new innovation uh, being a threat to their jobs, right? They now see innovation as more like something that uh, changes the, you know, the quality of jobs, and with it, you know, when they're able to upskill themselves, they're able to, uh, you know, uh, have a better life in terms of better wages and better lifestyle. So that pers perspective is also something that, you know, has been broken and is what I feel with the adoption cycles uh, reducing. So, and again, I feel there are two ways of, uh, you know, two parts to innovation. One is the inside-out approach and the outside-in approach. So in the outside-in approach, what happens is typically, you know, uh, we take the, um, market feedback, we do market research trying to get the issues, the perceived gaps, and you know, the perceived recommendations. That become the input and feedback into the next innovation cycle for us, or next innovation rather than creating the solutions for us. So this is something that the outside, you're getting the inputs from the outside, you're trying to create a use technology here. So technology here is something that used to create a solution, Right, so it is more like how you optimize, use innovation to optimize things, be it process, how, 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 or making it more reachable, the last mile connectivity, right? So technology is uh, an instrument here, right? So that's an outside in approach, whereas the inside and out approach is where you start from technology. You see how you want to enhance technology, you want to create new technologies, and how that creates new markets for you, and it changes the perspective altogether, right? So you're, you're no more like trying to optimize things, you're trying to create new world, you're trying to create new markets, new avenues rather. So that's the inside out approach. 
so in npca also you uh, know we we have this kind of approach where we see technology is the core of everything like the inside out approach so we dwell on technology as you know, um, pravina was saying so technology is used not to just create new products right that that makes an impact to the society rather we use also use technology to scale to billions and billions of value exchanges so for ever everything related to this technology has been our core thing and we always believe uh, technology is going to even you know bring a, or make the next big thing as well so th that's that's the dna we live with so that's how we see you now we we have the the technology we also see the upi as a technology the technologies of upi say natc the bps so are something that has created a base layer right for for uh, or how do i say a, a universal capability for a lot of uh, the ecosystem to come in and create their own local utilities so this is how a technology has created a new ecosystem altogether so that's 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 a that's a thought process i just put only few products here uh, but again the driving point here is what we have seen from the waves and what we have seen is technology is what has you know uh, led to the decrease in the duration of the waves and also a faster adoption the key being always technology here okay so so this makes me think or probably conclude to uh, to come to an end where you know uh, i've always wanted to compare this fintech and tech tech fin so what does it how 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 does it uh, you know differentiate be between them right so fintech is something like you know we start the thought process right our dna how it starts is we look at how the current financial system works and we try to use technology to make it better efficient cheaper right so that's that's very akin to say a faster horse right whereas the tech fin we start with the technology the existing technologies we we look at technology and try to create value exchanges around it to create new ecosystems that creates new avenues and right and and it becomes a chain effect where you know a different sets of use cases which you never seen before and how people adapt to it or how people use it uh, you know in things we would not even thought about when they designed it so that's for me is the tech fin and tech fin is something like right, it just not you know optimizes things right it creates new world for you so if we want to optimize or if you want to make it better we sh you know it's fintech is the way to go no doubt but if we are looking at creating new worlds in my view techfin is the way to go thank you